find your mouthpiece, and put on your jock strap. It's the Sports Blitz with Doug and Robbie. Okay, how long is your show? You guys have such a great setup. Hey, listen, so. if you're uh, under a rock or if you're in a cave, come on out and listen to our episode. It was fun talking baseball. Yeah. I love talking Red Sox. I love talking coaching. I don't mean? care because I would rather there not be an MLB season than have to sit and watch the colossal embarrassment. Hey, hello. Hi, Bloom. Yeah. Yeah, it's Doug and Robbie from uh, the Sports Blitz. I just wanted to find out whether you need some pitching. Here we go. In five, four, three. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sports Blitz. I'm Doug. We have Robbie. Robbie, how you doing tonight? Doing well, Doug. Doing well. Very excited to be here for episode number 101. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed our 100th, 100th episode special that we did last week. We had a great time doing so. And again, a big thank you to our pal Kyle for coming on and joining us for that episode. Just so much fun to make. And as we said last week, we are back for episode number 101. So just very, very happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Uh, If you haven't seen our 100th episode, please see it because it's really funny, especially at the end. We have a, a special uh, Robbie double rant at the end, which is very funny. I know I showed it to my wife. And my wife was on the floor laughing so hard she couldn't. She couldn't. Uh, she just couldn't stand it. it. Was just great. Double, double, double rant by Robbie. There it was awesome. It was great. Sometimes these things, when we put them out there, sometimes we don't know what's going to happen. No. Nope. And again, a special nope. thank you to Kyle. Kyle did a a, a wonderful job. We, we we love having him, and and um, it's great to have him on our hundredth episode. Um, but we do have a sponsor. We have a sponsor every week. And our sponsor is Zyman Organizing. Feeling overwhelmed with a room, cabinet, drawer, uh, closet, something like that, uh, that needs to be organized. Everybody's got a closet that needs to be organized. I guarantee you. Look at just pick up Robbie's closets. I guarantee you. Oh, the God, no. You, you definitely you, needs you, to be organized. You, you, don't, you, you, you would get lost. I don't want to go my, there. You, you, would get <laughs> lo- you would get lost in my closet. It's that. Exactly, I mean. exactly. Exactly. So contact Zyman Organizing. They will help you to create and organize that particular space, make it serene and a joy to spend time with. Remember, Zyman uh, Zyman Organizing, I wish I could get through this, Zyman Organizing, creating a stress-free home. So thank you to them for being, for continuing to be um, our sponsor for the Sports Blitz. And Robbie, tonight, we really have I guess it's a, it, it's a, it's a bitter, kind of a bitter, somber, bitter, 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 it's bittersweet, sweet, bitter somber sweet. subject, but, yeah. but kind of a nice subject because we're going to be talking about um, a very special guy that unfortunately uh, passed away just within the last couple of days, um, and it's Gerald Peter Remy. If you don't know who that is, uh, that is his Rem full dog. name. His full name uh, that would be Jerry Remy, um, and we're going to talk about him we're going to talk about our 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 thoughts we're gonna we're gonna think about some times that uh we may have seen him uh especially robbie with the broadcasting me during the playing and the broadcasting um things that we kind of remember about him and kind of honor him uh because um he is one of those icons in boston um didn't start out to be that way. Not that he was bad, but never started out to be that way uh, to begin with. Um, but just wanted to start out um, with, first of all, sending the Sports Blitz sends our condolences to the Remy family, um, all friends and relatives of the Remy family for, for um, you know, for, things that have happened the last couple of days and it's very unfortunate, but we're kind of going to celebrate his life um, and talk about him uh, in a way where we're using it as more of a celebration than anything else. So I just wanted to give you an idea. Do you have any thoughts on that at all? I just wanted to make sure. that I mean, listen, you know, like you said, Doug, obviously our thoughts and our prayers go out to his family. Um, You know, I know we're going to get a lot more into it. So I'll just say that, you know, it has been, 
it's been tough, you know, as a, as a long time and big Red Sox fans, I know Doug is as well. I mean, just to, to envision now truly, I know, and I know he had kind of been out of the broadcast, especially later this year, you know, when he was sort of dealing with treatments and stuff like that, but just the thought of, you know, basically per, of, of permanently a Red Sox broadcast without Jerry Remy, a part of it is, uh, is something that is, uh, you know, is taking a little bit of time to really settle in. And, uh, you know, he will definitely be missed by all of Red Sox nation. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we are going to tonight, you know, really give his career and, and, you know, his time with the Red Sox, the, the time and the remembrance that it deserves, because he really was a special part of, several eras of Red Sox baseball, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and so I'm just going to start and just give um, some basic information of of uh, of Jerry's, of, of Rem Dog's life. I like to call him Rem Dog instead of Jerry absolutely. Remy. Absolutely, no, absolutely. And I'll kind of tell you where that comes from, too. Absolutely. So, so Jerry Remy was born on November 8, 1952 in Fall River, Massachusetts. Wow. Actually a native son of Massachusetts. Uh, which is really great. Um, he spent 10 seasons in Major League Baseball. Um, he actually, um, when he first came into the league, it was 1970. When he came into the league, um, it's, at least it's said that he was actually uh, brought in by the Washington Senators, which I thought was kind of hmm. an interesting kind of situation. Um, he spent 10 seasons in the league, and this is not going to add up correctly, and I really don't know why, but I think it will. <laughs> so he spent three seasons with the California Angels from 1975 to 1977, and then seven seasons with the Boston Red Sox from 1978 to 84. Uh, and then, of course, went into broadcasting, which is great. He's only 5'9", uh, played second base, wore number two. Um, and it looks like at the Bruins game tonight that they have they have little badges on that that have the the number two on it, which is really yeah, great. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Jack Edwards during the first period just had a really really terrific, um, just a, a thought about about him, which is really great. A lot of um, na- a lot of national the national, national and yeah. local broadcasts yep. have been doing some very very. Uh, really, really nice tributes to Jerry throughout the throughout the past yeah. few days. It's been really, really cool. To see. I know Joe Buck on Fox the did a really, during the, the yeah. World Series did a very uh, yep. did a very touching tribute to him, and just I mean all and the over. national broadcast for the Patriots also did yeah. One too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Really yeah, CBA, yep, you're absolutely right. I mean, just all over. People have really been you know showing their their love and support to uh, the Remy family and and all of Red Sox nation. So uh, very, very cool and, and well-deserved to see for sure. Absolutely. Jerry Remy had a wife, His name, her name was Phoebe. He had two children, uh, Jared and Jenna, and one grandchild, Ariana, that's one grandchild. Um, it's interesting because when we brought up, and we could do a whole show about this, Robbie, because sports casting, you know, has morphed, has changed into a lot of things. And I studied some of this at Emerson being a radio guy at Emerson is, is sports, sports broadcasting has changed. It has, it has come to something that's totally different. And they really, Jerry actually, Remdog actually changed it even more. And the reason that he changed it even more is I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up in a few minutes, but what happened was, is that, Sports broadcasting was typically just play by play. Yeah. That's all it was. It was just telling who's got the ball, who's got the bat, who's up at bat, who's doing this, who's doing that. That's it. And it was just monotone. It was it was not it was just very straightforward. Um, you know, back in the you know, forties and fifties and even sixties, uh, that they dressed up and they wore ties and hats and you know the the uh, you know that they, they just it was just a different era in which right. people were broadcasting so it was totally different what what happened was that morphed into what they call color commentating 
color commentating was totally different. It was a different animal. And a different animal was, is that, and, and what Jerry brought was totally different. What he brought in was, you know, his enthusiasm over the game. Unbelievable. His humor. Nobody ever, you listen to the broadcast. Listen to the broadcast of the 1950s, 40s and 50s baseball. <laughs> See if there's any humor in it. There isn't. There's nothing. It's no, all nothing. I, would, nothing. I would definitely hazard the guess. Yes. There's there's nothing. No, nothing. Nothing goes on there. <laughs> but what he did was he made color commentating an art. It was incredible the way he was able to take his knowledge of baseball and be able to put it out there, but to be humorous. Unbelievable. One of the one of the things, and I'll give you an example. It's actually not a broadcast I actually saw, but I just saw this recently um, because I was looking up his life on YouTube, and it was really just awesome. Some of the stuff that he has out there. Um, one of the things that happened was is that <laughs> I don't I don't know the complete story, so you have to look it up on YouTube and see if you can find it. This is the difference. You know, going up in and being in the broadcast booth and just telling what the game is all about <clears throat> was something that they used to do. Now, color commentary is is that somebody coming in that's either played the game or didn't play the game. Of course, Jerry played the game. Knowing the game fairly well, but using humor, using um, using his his thoughts on the game using his knowledge of the game, using his enthusiasm of the game. And there was one time when he was talking about something, and I think he had mentioned Big Poppy. And and after he mentioned Big Poppy, all of a sudden, he's doing the broadcast, and all of a sudden, he gets a phone call. His phone is, like, on the table. He gets a phone call, and he actually answers it on the air, and they show him and Don Orsello in the, in the booth and all of a sudden, he's on the phone. He's like, hello? <laughs> it's Big Poppy on the phone. He's talking to Big Poppy. He's talking to him about the game that Big Poppy's actually watching. And and they just banter. They just go back. He's talking. You can't hear what Big Poppy's saying. But he's talking to Big Poppy. Like, hello, Big Poppy. I... <laughs> it was just amazing. And that's the kind of thing that was not prevalent a long time ago. That's and some people call it antics. I don't call it that. I call it real. I call it oh, real. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I call it. I call it real. And that's something that I definitely saw um out of him, especially in the broadcasting area. So he broadcasted for the Red Sox for 33 years. That's three decades. That's amazing. Um just unbelievable. So when he played, when he played, his 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 lifetime, I'm just gonna give you lifetime numbers here. His except for the home runs, because I I didn't get that. Lifetime batting average is 275. Hmm. Lifetime. Hmm. Not bad. No, not um bad uh runs batting runs batted in 329. Um stolen bases. Two hundred and eight. Jerry wow. Remy. Jerry Remy is five nine. Okay, I mean, you didn't think the guy when you saw him when you saw him on the on you know on the field, he was this little guy. You know, he's this little tiny guy, um, and you wouldn't think that he would be able to be able to steal bases, but I guess he did at least two hundred eight times. <laughs> he started with Nesson in nineteen eighty eight. Uh, that's around the time where Nesson was really starting to get big for baseball games and stuff like that. Um, and he expanded his on-air. So he was actually not just on Nesson, but he also did not just the broadcast, but he would be doing some of the commentary in the Nesson studios about the Red Sox, like, after the game. He would right. actually go to the game. And that started in 1995. Um. He was just known for his exuberance, his his humor, non sequiturs. <laughs> um, just gave commentary um, 
also, he, people loved him because he gave gave commentary with a New England accent. He always had that New England <laughs> accent. <clears throat> we loved him for that too because it's typically when you see some of the national broadcast people, you find that they don't have accents. They don't have accents on board because it doesn't matter where they're from. If you're doing a national broadcast, you have to be balanced. You, have, yeah. you can't write root for one over the other, even if you're – you're doing a game from your hometown. You, you can't show that. Right. Um, so, but, but Red Dog was a local broadcast guy. So being a local broadcast, he had that New England accent, which was freaking fabulous. And in 2007, this is really interesting. He was, in 2007, he was given the name Rem Dog when he became president of Red Sox Nation. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Red Sox Nation, Robbie, do you know what Red Sox Nation is? Why don't you give us an idea? I mean, what Red, Red Sox Nation basically <laughs> is the Red Sox. I mean, it's really Sox. simple. It's not, yeah, it's I mean, not it's, complicated. It's, it's Red Sox fans. It right, basically exactly. is Red Sox fans. That's what it is. The, the name of Red Sox fans globally. I mean, Red Sox Nation is Red Sox fans everywhere. You know, basically all Doesn't together. Doesn't matter where you are. Just all together, just rooting on the team and they basically turned that that global fandom of the Red Sox into an actual nation you know into an actual sort of group quote unquote right I mean they basically it's kind of funny that you know obviously Jerry Remy was and has been and always will be as far as I'm concerned president of Red Sox nation but I mean you had like you you had sort of the organ organized to the point where you had like governors of each state for Red Sox Nation. You had like all these different all these different things, and uh, I mean it just it's it's a badge of honor around here to be you know to be just part of Red Sox Nation. I mean it is you know we've both been it for our entire lives. I mean you know we've through the pain and through the glory, and it's. Uh, it's a really special thing. And he was just a really special part of really taking that moniker to the next level. And uh, that, like I said, that's the reason why, I mean, there, there, there will never be, as far as I'm concerned, there will never be a true president of Red Sox station. Jerry Rebbe is, is it, period, end of story. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and again, I obviously totally agree with that. Um, I think that's that's super important. This is something that I'm not sure if you know, Robbie, but it's really when I read this, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So Bill James in 2001, Bill James rated Jerry Remy as the hundredth greatest second baseman of all time. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. Wow. His field in 2001, his field percentage was 0.981. So that's his, his fielding. Um, I have some other stats too, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do too much on the stats. I just know that this. That when I saw this, the rated really the hundred all best? time, all time, all time. That's that's incredible. That's like crazy. That, yeah. I mean, crazy good, not yeah. crazy bad. It's just like, that's awesome. That's that's so fabulous. Um, he he has his own uh, restaurant. He does, yeah. He has his own restaurant. He's also an author, so he wrote several. Uh, he wrote several books, including a few children's books about Wally. Yeah. Um, and I actually got those books. I have. I, I, ha I no, I have uh, his book about announcing uh oh you do oh, okay yeah. absolutely yeah yes no that's great um and he's an author too restaurateur was a restaurateur baseball player broadcaster um and unfortunately you know this is the start in uh, november of 2008 he had a very small low-grade um cancerous area removed from a lung um he he battled seven seven or eight different times <clears throat> to come back and put it in remission, do whatever he needs to do, take a little time. He took a little time away, <clears throat> seven or eight different times to make it try to 
try to make it go away as best as possible um, and then be able to come back. And when he came back, you know, standing ovation and everybody loved it and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's basically kind of what I have, kind of in a nutshell, um, Robbie. So wanted to kind of get your thoughts, your your first thoughts on on some of the stuff, especially the Bill James thing, which which when I saw it, I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I um, mean, because I didn't even know that. No, 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 absolutely not. I mean, I I just learned that from you for the first time. So yeah, uh, once in a while, I get that I have one or two things that you may not know. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's I mean, okay. I didn't know it either. So I mean, that that is pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, you know, that people thought that highly of him as a second baseman, let alone as a broadcaster. And, you know, it's interesting, obviously, a little side note here is that his last public appearance, his last Fenway appearance was um, actually earlier this month at the AL wildcard game, uh, which I had the pleasure of, of being at. He came out, uh, and through the first pitch to Dennis Eckersley, long, another longtime player, longtime friend. association with long the Red Sox, friend. longtime friend, longtime friend broadcast Jerry. partner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, the, those two are very close. And it, it, it was definitely an emotional night, you know, seeing him come out and knowing what he was going through. And, and you could tell, you know, that night that he did not, that yeah, he was not looking well so to speak uh for you know for various uh for various visual reasons but uh it was still you know and obviously looking back on now knowing that was, it was his last public appearance and fun way appearance it definitely makes it that much more special to be able to have witnessed that and uh you know sort of be able to sort of witness the the emotion that was that that particular moment. I mean, I and I know we're going to get into specific memories and stuff like that, uh, you know, coming up here because there are so many Jerry Remy memories. I mean, you could have a whole, you know, you could go for hours and hours, you know, just talking about memories alone of his of his broadcast, which I know we're going to get a little bit into over, you know, during our time on tonight's show. But uh, yeah, like I said, I mean. Jerry Remy was Red Sox broadcast for, for me, for my lifetime. I mean, basically my entire life growing up watching the Red Sox, you know, Jerry Remy was always a part of that broadcast. And, and like I said, he just had this way of providing such a insightful analysis of the game, but also just this, this entertainment factor to, to the game. And he was just, you know, just synonymous with Red Sox broadcast to me and to so many others. And I will say this, and, you know, this is obviously, you know, I've only been alive for a certain, certain portion of Red Sox history, but as far as I am concerned, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this with no qualms about saying it. As far as I'm concerned, Jerry Remy and Don Orsello are the greatest Red Sox broadcast team ever. And I, again, I, I know people are probably, people are probably, you know, not people probably, you know, will disagree, you know, especially people who have lived through different eras. But uh, I mean, they just, the way they fed off each other and the way that they call the game together was just so special and just so entertaining and just so much fun. I mean, it, it, nothing, nothing that I have experienced or witnessed rivals those two uh, calling a baseball game together. And uh, I know Don Orsillo has, you know, definitely made his thoughts well known and, uh, you know, thinking definitely thinking of him as well as all of Jerry's other Red Sox broadcast partners, but just it's, uh, you know, he was Red Sox baseball during this time. You know, he's one of those people that will always be synonymous with the Red Sox, like a, like a Johnny Pesky, you know, like a, uh, you know, you know, Jim Rice when Jim Rice ultimately, you know, yeah, obviously Jim Rice is still living, uh, but so just, those are just some, you know, when you think of the Red Sox, 
Yeah. You say, yeah, I'm no. glad you said that because yeah. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah. You do a breaking news here or something. No, like that. Yeah. no I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm no, just no, more, I, I, uh, yeah, no, but uh, I mean, it's like I said, he's just synonymous with the Red Sox and synonymous with Red Sox broadcasts. And I just feel, I feel very privileged to have been able to have him be a part of the Red Sox broadcast for, for my entire lifetime. That's something, something very special, and which will be very much missed. Like I was saying before. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I totally, um, I agree with a portion of what you said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but that's okay. Um, I think, and, and, and again, I, I think I, I grew up in, in the 70s, you know, watching late 70s, started probably 1977 or so, 78, watching um, the Red Sox, watching who you just mentioned, Jerry Remy at second base, Jim Rice in the outfield, Fred Lynn in the outfield, Kari Shremsky in the outfield, um, you know, George Scott at first base, uh, Butch Hobson. Um, Rico Petroselli, you know, these guys are Carlton Fisk. Um, you know, I, I, that's when I started watching this. So it, it was, these, these were the original dirt dogs. And I say dirt dogs because there was a time just recently, I believe it was in the nineties where they, you know, and maybe even early two thousands where they started saying that, that that one of the I can't remember which one was it 2004 with, with the dirt dogs there was some world series team or probably some team, I, I, think, was, yeah, yeah, I think you're right i think it was oh that old four it was oh four yeah, team was the sure, dirt dogs yeah, because yeah it, yeah, it had it, they just got dirty they just got dirty they played hard they they they, they loved playing with each other they were a team you could tell every time they went out there they were going to win a game if they weren't they were going to lose together they would just dirt dog to me means just being out there and playing hard every single minute. And that's what they did. Jerry Remy was that kind of, kind of guy. He was, he was the kind of guy that played really hard. Um, when he was on those late seventies, early eighties teams, these were teams that played hard. These are the teams I grew up with. Right. Um, Absolutely. he got dirty. He stole bases. He got dirt everywhere. I mean, <laughs> You know, I mean, he was, you know, one of the old time baseball players. What I liked, what I liked about Jerry Remy once he became a broadcaster, you always want to, you always, not always, like broadcasters that know what the heck they're talking about. Jerry Remy was a baseball mind. You want somebody who's going to give you a different aspect of the game. And he did. Gave you a different aspect because he knew the game really well, but he didn't want it to be a, so technical. He wanted it to be where if my wife was watching and then she doesn't know too much about baseball, that she could actually watch him, which she actually did, and actually was able to follow the game because he would bring it down to, not down, bring it to a different level for people. Yeah. He was a Boston native. Everybody related to him. It was relatable. Yeah. Everybody loved him because he was he was part of Boston. Yeah. He was part of Boston. Born and bred here, stayed here his whole life. He was here. His, it, everybody was here. So his whole family was here. So it, it, it's a totally different animal when you're talking about a guy who knows baseball so well, who played the game. It's just different when he's talking about baseball because – he is relatable. It's one of those guys where if you're listening on the radio or, well, radio is different because there's two other broadcasters for radio typically. But even if you're listening and you go into the kitchen and you're listening to him, he's like talking about, oh, how this home run is here and how the pitch is a certain way and how, oh, that second baseman should have covered because of this kind of thing. And this is what, this is how, and you're like, oh, that makes sense. That's the kind of broadcast very relatable to people, but he was also the people that were listening to him. But he was also the kind of guy that was just like an everyday guy. The kind of person that, that I can relate to, you know, several other kind of players. Um, 
I would think Larry Bird would be somebody like that too. Um, Larry Bird, after games, he would go to the local bar around the corner and drink with the guy that were in there. <laughs> I mean, who who does that now? You can't no, do that now. No, I mean, nobody would do that. Now. No, <laughs> you can't stand. But that's what Larry Bird would do because that's the kind of guy he was. He was mowing his own lawn. You know, I mean, that's yeah. you know, I mean. He made enough money to hire someone, but he's not going to do that. He's going to mow his own darn lawn. If you caught him on a Saturday, and I lived around the corner from him, I did see him mow his lawn every once in a while. <laughs> but but that's kind of what Rendog was, is that he was relatable. He's the kind of guy that you could go up to him and say, "Hey, Jerry, let's let's uh, let's go get a beer. Yeah, let's go get a beer and talk about baseball." Well, and, and one thing, I, and I, I don't mean to, to jump in for a second, but you made me think of something is like, no, go ahead. He, no, he, he appealed to multiple cultures as well. And what I mean by that is like, and I, and I was, I, a perfect example of this was, you know, they were interviewing somebody on TV, a fan or something like that, who was talking about how she got a big kick always. She was a, you know, a um, Hispanic American. And she got a big kick out of how before every broadcast he would say is, you know, vintage uh, Buenas tardes, amigos, or Buenas noches, amigos, you know, when they're doing the little read for the SAP. <laughs> oh, right. But to the, the, <laughs> so he just, he, he really, he really, you know, sort of provided that level of, you know, really appealing to, to just so many different, you know, styles of fans, cultures of fans, just so many people out there through his various, ways of uh of conducting a broadcast it was really it was really a cool thing absolutely he related to people on on, on their level yeah and and on that work hard kind of level um he at least i love listening to him because he he you know i i think what it's what it comes down to is this Three words. Wait. <laughs> Four words. Sorry. Four words. Oh, I had to count. Four words on my hand. Um, thank God there weren't more than five. I don't know what it would do. All right. So <laughs> what it was I'm just is, glad you know how to count to four. I mean, that's, that's, I just, that's great. Just yeah. learned it today. Just learned it today. <laughs> um, Rem Dog made baseball fun. He made baseball fun. He made baseball fun to listen to. He made baseball fun to to hear. And he was at least when I was listening to him, I I I, I had a great time just listening to him because he, he would something would happen. Like like it's like the old John Madden thing. John Madden actually if it's a boring game, you know, it was like thirty to nothing or something like that. <laughs> John Madden would do it like they would put the camera, they would be listening, and John Madden would say, so what's going on with this Gatorade over here? And he would he would show a table full of like this Gatorade and yeah. all the cups. He said, "How come the cups over here are are not all lined up with the cups over here?" I'm just wondering what's going on there. And he would he would just add this thing to it, um, and and that was just fun. He would use a telestrator too, so he would circle the Gatorade and stuff like that. Jerry Remy was a lot like that. So if something was going on, if something was happening, um, it was just, it was just really, really. There's other broadcasters that I could say that 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 are kind of like that, and kind of take that into consideration. Um, falling off a chair, falling off the chair, um, dancing. Um, there were there's some scenes of him. Remy the uh, air guitar. Remy, the, I mean the, the classic. Air, Remy, Remy the air guitar, air guitar on the chair, on Absolutely. the chair, He's standing yeah. on a chair, yeah, in front of the glass, and at at Fenway, and he's on the chair, and he's doing air guitar, and all of a sudden he falls off. The I chair. know, yeah, it was it was, it was just <laughs> classic, classic. It was classic Remy. It's really what it he was. Made, it really he was. He made the game fun, and that's yeah. that's what sets him apart from everybody else. Now, when you're talking about Don Rosillo and Jerry Remy being the best, I agree with you up to a point. I agree with you because when I started listening to baseball, and actually the listening was the same as the as the broadcast. There weren't, I don't think there were two different. 
in the 70s and 80s, I don't think there were two different broadcasts. In other words, the TV people were on radio too. Gotcha. So they just they simulcast it onto radio or radio simulcast. It. Yeah, it was TV radio. So that's kind of what they did. I don't remember them being a broadcast specifically two guys or one guy from radio versus the other two guys on TV. So the guys back then were Ned Martin and Ken Harrelson. Ken oh, Harrelson hog, wore a cowboy hog. hat. Hawk Harrelson, absolutely. Hawk Harrelson, he wore a cowboy hat. And I don't know where he came from. But he, and he talked with an accent too. But he was great. You Ned know. Martin was very, very good. But these guys... Again, and again, somebody who is in the Red Sox Hall of Fame, I know that, um, is Joe Castiglione. Yeah. And, and you really, really can't forget Joe because Joe is, Joe is very smart and very knowledgeable, and he always has this, this thing in his head. But, again, w when it comes down to it, if you think about the 33 years that Remy has been, Remy is way up there. And I totally agree with you on that. Um, I I loved the broadcast. I loved I loved watching him play. Um, I know you didn't watch him play. You got to kind of go back to YouTube for that. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where I think that that he, he kind of well, when you think about Red Sox broadcasts, he's on the top of the list because he's so relatable. Um, and, and again, his play, when he, when he was a player, I heard, I heard about, I didn't see this, but I heard about, he was one of the jokers in the clubhouse. He was, <laughs> you know, he was one of those, one of those guys who played hard, um, and, and really worked really hard, hard doing it. So, um, uh, wanted to ask you, Robbie, what, what you, if, if there's anything else that you could think of that kind of, you know, kind of rings. You know, that, that's a buzzer off in your head that, that you thought about uh, from past games that you listened to. I know there's a lot of stuff on, on YouTube now about him, but I wanted to kind of get get some feedback from you about what you thought, what your thoughts are. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think the thing going back to, you know, Remy and Orsillo, I mean, and like I said, I mean, I, I, I mean, I pretty much, I pretty much really started watching the Sox back, you know, basically I sort of went through three sort of uh, versions or of, of a Jerry Remy involved broadcast um, pairing, because obviously I think I pretty much started out when uh, it was him and Sean McDonough doing the Red Sox games back, you know, the, in the nineties and, and into the early, uh, the very early two thousands. And then obviously him and Orsillo, I mean, just the, the classic duo right there. They'll always be remembered in, in my mind. And then obviously, you know, recently him and, and Dave O'Brien. The thing about him and Orsillo that really made them stand out in my mind is that they could, and you kind of alluded to this, Doug, is that they could take a, a boring baseball game and basically turn it into a three plus hour stand-up comedy routine i mean they really right. they really could i mean just some of those moments i know we we could kind of you know in the next few minutes here sure again to like some of the more memorable individual like memories from his broadcast but like there were just so many times where you know it's kind of a you know kind of a a dull game and but they they just had this way about them of having these moments of just pure comedy gold between the two of them and just really making you want to keep the game on even if it was you know, a complete blowout or just not the not the most entertaining of games itself and uh and i just uh, i mean just to be able to go through that era of those two together i mean there there's nothing there was nothing like it uh to me like i said and uh i mean like i said just it really does come down i've heard other people allude to over the past few days is that like I said, they could take a game and turn it and basically into like i said a three plus hour stand-up comedy routine i mean they were that they just fed so well off each other uh you know just that camaraderie and i mean just you know, just they, they both kind of had the same 
broadcast personality, it seemed like, and just, like I said, sort of fit so well together. And uh, I mean, I said I was, I was so bummed out when Orsillo left to go to San Diego because, you know, it, with all due respect to Dave O'Brien, and hey, listen, Dave O'Brien's a terrific announcer. Uh, you know, he's done a great job in his time in Nesson and prior to that, you know, in, in radio and, you know, the national, 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 national stuff that he'd done. But it, just to me, there, there, there just can't be another Remy and Orsillo. I mean, it just, that was just the, the pinnacle in my lifetime, I should say, the pinnacle of the Red Sox broadcast. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just very sad that, a, you know, you'll never again, you, you, you will never get to ha- add to the, we won't get to add to those, to those memories. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I, t- I totally agree with that. I think that, um, they, they did have a, a wake for him in Waltham today. Hundreds of hundreds of hours. I saw that. Came to sign, sign a, a book and to, and to pay tribute. Kind of I mean, just pay, truly yeah, pay tribute just, to. I was just kind of, I was reading it earlier and they said that that, that outpouring of people that came to pay their final respects to him is just unbelievable. Um, just, just a world class guy, and really, um, you know, one of those guys where you're absolutely right. It just again made baseball fun, and <laughs> turned turned color commentary into something totally different. And um, and they and they were real too. Like they, you know, they oh, were. Yeah. Well, they, they, you know, that's what I mean. It's like they were, they weren't like especially that that particular duo. You know, the Remy and Orsillo duo. You know, I keep coming back to. Is that they didn't have to to force the humor or force the entertainment. Like it just it just came so naturally to them. And that's why I talk about, you know, them feeding off of each other. I mean, some of their best moments were just their natural reactions to certain things that happened during the game and just the their just incredible, incredibly natural senses of humor about things really just made made them the, the the duo that they were for sure and made jerry what he was i mean just his like i said his sense of humor and just the way that showed through during broadcast just just totally made him who he was as a announcer player and as a person absolutely um i just i, I just think that he's uh he, he just he just had some some really great moments and a lot of moments I, I, I guarantee you there were a lot of moments I didn't even see uh, or don't remember um, uh, just because of whatever um, but um, th- there is a place to start with moments this is a moment that I that I actually I don't think I really remember but um, here's a moment in a place a good place to start. Uh, we go back to Patriots Day in 2007. Mm-hmm. <laughs> after one, after oh, one yeah. Sox fan interfered oh, with a foul yeah. ball. Oh, this, and, is, this, is, and a, this is at the top of my list, man. I was at this <laughs> game. This is at the top of my list right here. And a second responded with a pepperoni projectile. One of Rebby's broadcast career highlights. A pizza. It's they threw food. the pizza. Yeah, it's. Um, I think he says, "Here comes the pizza." Yeah, here, here yeah, comes exactly. The pizza. Here comes the pizza. Remy's Remy's slow motion, straightforward, deadpan analysis on Don Don Rosillo struggles to keep it together. Um, there, there is a clip of it which we won't oh, yeah. show right now. We have oh, to go yeah. to YouTube to see it, but there is a clip of it. Um. It's it's all all over social media right now because oh yeah I think that's freaking great it was it was um, amazing it was amazing it was it was just it was it was classic them first of all but second of all it's just one of those moments where you're like wait really like what huh who what but it just it was it was <laughs> it was just pure pure gold from like listening to them you know deal with that moment I mean it's just pure just comedy entertainment gold right exactly. There. Exactly, and, and the other one that I do that I do kind of remember um, 
And this one, I, I hope it's not on your list. I hope you have a, a, a few other ones and we'll go right back to you, Robbie. Is uh, during the 2014 game when Remy actually lost a tooth in the booth. That was, that was, that was, I mean, that wasn't, I, I have other ones, but yeah, that was one on my, on my list. But yes, uh, <laughs> the two, against the Cubs. It was against the Cubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then so I guess oh, trying to play dentist. Uh, right. If I tried to play dentist by taking out a pair of pliers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and it went to work. I thought it was just really interesting because you see him in the broadcast and all of a sudden he's like this. It's like, oh my God, what happened? Um, uh, yeah, Donald Cillo may not have a future in dentistry, uh, but but his chemistry, the chemistry that Remy and Arcillo Amazing. had 15 Amazing. years made it so much so much nicer, so much, so like, much fun, so, so much, much fun, fun to to watch the broadcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I'll do is, oh, they they have this on on. They have him losing his tooth too on the on the uh, on yeah, YouTube. You also, post, so you, you got it for really. You really got to find some of this. You stuff. Get, you, yeah, you got to go on YouTube and look at this and watch like the uh, the full full screen video of these of these moments. Yes, this um, stuff is absolute classic. Classic Red Sox um, situations where some of it wasn't even had nothing to do with the game. So, yeah, so it was very, very good. Uh, Robbie, I'm going to throw it over to you with 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 uh, a couple to a few more. Of yeah, Jerry Remy's um, antics, I guess you could say, or Jerry Remy's things that you remember about Jerry. Yeah, no, I mean there there are three other moments that kind of stand out. Well, actually. All right, I'll do four, and I'll try to keep them sort of quick here. But uh, there are sort of four that sort of stand out to me from from their broadcast times. And again, just sort of go to the the natural senses of humor that both had. The first one, and I'm trying, I've been trying to just figure out how to describe this moment. There's a moment during a game where you know you know how sometimes during the broadcast you know they'll pan to fans in the stands and stuff like that you know they yeah. they show people and so they they happen to pan to this one particular set of it's two couples that are sitting right next to each other and um while the camera is on the one of the male uh members of one of the couples reaches over and and grabs the female by sort of body by sort of body part in the chest area. Uh, I really don't know how to how to say it other than that. You know, sort of keep it keep family show here. Uh, but uh, Don or Silla Jeremy literally lost their marbles on that. I mean, they could. I, Don was trying to call the next pitch and literally was just dying laughing uh because of it and it was just it was the funniest thing just to hear their reaction was it just made it so hilarious um and don even said in an interview you know in the past few days that part of it wasn't even that part of it was probably the guys in the production truck just spitting one-liners about the moment into their headsets and so he, Don's trying to call the play while he has like this humor being thrown at him uh, by the guys in the production truck. So it was, uh, that was quite something. Um, another one was they were in Houston uh, and they wore like these, these hats, like these like cowboy hats. I don't even know what you call them. These like funny Astros hats during the broadcast. And like, you just have them on screen wearing these hats. And it was, quite something there was a, t a moment where jerry remy bought don orsillo a light and gave it to him during the broadcast so that he could like shot him shot a light on his like scorecard and stuff like that and like <laughs> don tried to find the perfect place to like put the light and, Jer and jerry's <laughs> like wait a minute wait a minute you know, i'm trying to do something something nice and you know you're 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 giving me grief because you don't know where to put the light blah 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 blah, blah. And, like <laughs> Just they they have a good laugh over that, and then the last one actually involved them and um, Lenny Clark and uh, Dennis Leary, who are obviously two well-known Boston area comedians. Uh, were in Dennis the Leary went to Emerson College. Yes, yes, he did. Yep. Um, shout out Emerson. 
Um, but they're they're in the broadcast booth, you know, discussing. I think they're they're promoting a charity that Dennis has or something like that, and they start talking about Kevin Euclid. I don't know why they start talking about Kevin Euclid, and then all of a sudden they just start ragging on Mel Gibson uh, for. <laughs> You know, his some commentary that he may have made against people of a certain religion, uh, you know, back back in the back in the day there. And uh, they the Jerry and Don just start dying laughing and like this rant that Dennis Leary starts going on about Mel Gibson. It's just the funniest thing ever. Like they can't even, you know, string two words together at one point. They're just basically on the on the floor laughing. And again, that just sort of goes to show you the the natural senses of humor and entertainment that they were able to bring to the broadcast. And uh, yeah, I mean, there, 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 there are so definitely more moments. Like again, you, I mean, there are so many more memories that you could pack into, you know, a multi-hour show here for sure. But those are, those are definitely the ones that like, I will always look back on fondly and have been kind of helping get, you know, me and other Red Sox fans through these last few days are just going back and checking them out on YouTube and uh, social media. It's uh, been a good, been a good help, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort of deal with, you know, deal with Jerry's loss. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a couple more that I just, I, I just kind of found that I kind of forgot about, but I found um, in 2018, uh, Nesson reporter Garen Austin managed to convince Remy to try a toasted grasshopper. Uh, oh, Safe, I think I remember that. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. It's a Safeco Field delicacy. They actually have them there. So if you wanted to have them, um, you can. And she convinced him to try one. <laughs> and how she okay. did that is a complete mystery. Uh, Remy's thoughts on the taste are not a mystery and you have to see that video because it is super funny and uh, you'll you'll get right away whether jerry liked it or he didn't like it but i don't know how she got him it. well i will it say great. i i will say that uh garen austin obviously has been along with everybody's been sort of tweeting out you know memories of jerry and one she did post a video of them dancing prior to a game one year and uh you know it was it was it was definitely something definitely another another comedic moment in in his tenure and uh yeah you can definitely tell that you know they he just had that sort of impact on everybody that he worked with uh you know sort of sharing his personality and sense of humor with everybody that sort of stepped through those those nests and doors absolutely again one thing that um a lot of people may not know about Jerry Remy's playing days is that there were no real rules about taking out the second baseman. <laughs> no rules at all. Really. I mean, to right. protect the second baseman at all. It was a dirt dog game back then, and you just played, and that's what it was. No, um, no 10th inning guy on second base crap. So they just didn't have that. Um, didn't have those – Little soft. I know what you're like trying to do that. here, and I'm, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. We're, I'm having not I'm a, just, we're having a bittersweet just, sort of conversation. You're, you're not going to get me to go on a rant here. You're not going to get me to go on a rant here. I'm not trying to get. I think I'm just I'm going on I'm a rant. I'm not up going a on a rant, which is ironic. I'm, I am bringing up a rule that would never ever happen in the late seventies. Uh, early 80s shouldn't be happening the 80s. in the 2000s but you i know. know i call them soft rules but they're soft rules so so jerry very Remy soft. did did get taken out a lot at second base but he always held the ball and he was always really really very good about knowing that the guy was coming in after him um uh, remy often put his body on the line at second base at times he did the same in the booth also you have to look up and we talked about this before. You have to look up the video of Jerry Remy playing air guitar on a t on a chair. Oh yeah, and him falling off the chair as he's oh, doing yeah. air. <laughs> so very cool. Um, just, just really, really great. Some of these, some of these really wonderful moments. Um, 
it was just just wonderful to see him in the booth. Um, Don Arcello said just recently he's never had so much fun um, um, actually um, talking about baseball than he did with Jerry Remy, and that's that's what it comes down to. Uh, the broadcast booth was 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 a fun place to be over three decades, and Jerry Remy made it so. Right from Donna Soto right there, and that, you know, that totally that hits, that hits the nail right on the head, right? Yeah, it's I it's mean, just it really exactly does. what we've been talking about, and it yeah. just totally makes sense. But but I will I will tell you before we get to our, um, you know, our final thoughts for the evening uh, about Jerry or about anything else is that um, if you haven't seen these things, you've got to look these things up. Absolutely. They are funny. They are real. They are awesome. And it, it's kind of a way of, of kind of, you know, keeping Jerry Remy's, you know, um, keeping it alive, keeping all those really good things that, that happened a long time ago. And just recently, um, you know, keeping that memory alive um, for him. But we, we are at the, at, at the, the show point where we talk about our final thoughts or final feel, feelings or final whatever. Um, so I'm going to throw it over to Robbie uh, for his final thoughts for this particular episode. Thank you for catching me. You're, you're, you're very, you're very welcome. Happy to know. Uh, so I'm going to, I have two final thoughts tonight and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of pivot away from, from Jerry Remy here for my two final thoughts, but one is baseball related uh, and I'll start with that one. That is, I want to congratulate the Atlanta Braves on their World Series title. Uh, as used they, to be the Boston Braves. Used to be the Boston Braves. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the Braves who won their first World Series title since 1995. Uh, just a couple of nights ago with a Game 6 victory in Houston over the Astros, which I'm very happy that the Astros did not win the World Series for a number of different reasons. And uh, like I said, just want to give a shout out to the Braves and their fan base and congratulate them. I actually happen to know a couple of Braves fans personally. So congratulations to all of them for, uh, for you know, the World Series title. And uh, now it is onward and forward to the 2022 MLB season. And, you know, hopefully the Red Sox can uh, – Win it all in 2022 for Jerry Remy. Uh, yeah, that would be sort of my hot take slash, you know, true hope of the uh, of the evening here. But uh, my second final thought is kind of a funny one. It has nothing to do with baseball or professional sports, but actually has to do with high school sports in this area in our good old state of Massachusetts, the good old MIAA, uh, which stands for the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. This year... Uh, the MIAA in their and I just didn't know what it was. Go ahead. In their wisdom, switched from a uh, sectional based tournament approach, which basically you had four sectionals, North, South, West, and Central, and then the four winners of those would play in the state final four uh, for each sport. They switched this year to an all state tournament format. Uh, for all the sports where basically teams from all over the state are now in the same divisions uh, as each other. And as you can imagine, is creating quite the interesting state tournament matchups as the fall sports tournaments have gone underway here in the last couple of days in terms of distance wise. I wanted to give you a perfect example of one of those uh, very interesting distance wise state tournament matchups um monument mountain high school which is based out in the western part of massachusetts i forget exactly what town it is based in but it's definitely in western massachusetts uh they their girls volleyball team opened up their tournament to uh they actually opened up on saturday on the road uh and who do they face off with in their first tournament contest but the good old uh, Nantucket Whalers. Uh, yes, a team from Western Massachusetts is playing a tournament game on Nantucket, which means 
that they have to take a bus three hours and nine minutes from their school to Hyannis and then get on a ferry, a one hour ferry ride from Hyannis to Nantucket. So their round trip total travel time between going from Western Mass to Hyannis, Hyannis to Nantucket, and then repeating the process backwards is a good old eight hours and 20 minutes of total travel time to play this tournament match coming what up. What time traveling to play? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I just, I, I'm not, I'm not really doing this to give an opinion, but I'm just, I'm more doing it to sort of provide a, uh, maybe even just a good laugh at how the state tournament has in, has added some very intriguing uh, travel distances, uh, you know, for for teams that you know used to just play for all the for most of the rounds teams in their own sectional to now being forced again to travel eight hours round trip uh, to play a single tournament contest. So those are my two final thoughts for the evening. And again, obviously, you know, rest in peace to Jerry Ruby as well. I mean, I think that goes without saying here, but. Uh, Doug, let me kick it back over to you. Uh, you're throwing, I'm kicking. No, not that kind of kick. Uh, what are uh, what are your final thoughts for episode number 101 this evening? Well, that, that school that you're talking about, is that Monument Mountain? It's Monument Mountain High School, school yes. Yes, that is located in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, from Great Barrington to Hyannis to Nantucket, back to Hyannis, back to Great Barrington. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. I hope they won because no, it, 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 it's, on it's on Saturday. It's oh, on, it's on Saturday. Oh, it's on Saturday. It's on Saturday at 2 p.m. So I was trying to figure out in my head what time they would have to leave Great Barrington <laughs> to make it to Nantucket for 2 p.m. Opening, uh, opening serve there. And, Oh, being what are you going to do about that? Anyway, <laughs> it is a great Barrington. That's where it is. Um, anyway, um, yeah. Wow. Um, don't know if I could do that, especially with Steve Geary. So um, I think what it comes down to is, is I actually, yeah, there goes Robbie. He's down. down can, I say, can I just say, can I just say, I'm, I'm, again, I, I want, I'm, I will let you finish your final thought, but I do have to point this out. You know this because I've, I texted you about it. I am in a fantasy football league with multiple members of that Rivers episode that we had, you know, Dan and Andrew and all that group. And Dan Fanukin, lovely, you know, former Sports Blitz guest, really enjoyed having him on, who was the one who told that story, by the way. Uh, if you go back and watch his episode, I believe number 70, 75, something like that. Look it up. Um, he His team name is actually... I think it's like Doug. Ver Hold on. I got. I I can't do it justice unless I look at. I'm gonna do a little quick odd show in show research here. Um, his team name is called Zyman versus Gary UFC 1000. So I uh, just wanted to give a little shout out to Dan there for uh, taking that story Thanks, and Dan. turning it into a fancy football team name. <laughs> Do you, get, do you get royalties off of that, by the way? I don't know, but I'm going to start talking to him about that. Though. I'm going to have to give him a little text, a little email, a little whatever. If he has... Uh, if tell he him wins, that he can't use the Simon name without, uh, without if he, uh, if he, permission. If he wins the league, he's got to give you a little, uh, little percentage. If he wins the league, yeah. he's got to give me a royalty. Definitely yeah, a royalty yeah. there. <laughs> Definitely. That's unbelievable. Um, anyway, that's um, that's Sorry, quite a travel. For did, those, did, for those did, guys, mean, but... did mean to jump into your final thought. No worries, there, but, no uh, worries go, at all. Go ahead. No please. worries at all. So, I have a couple of final thoughts. The first one is obviously rest in peace, um, uh, Jerry Remy. Uh, we will absolutely miss you, and um, our thoughts and prayers are are, are with your family. Um, but. Um, no, it's it's an end of an era, and and well, we don't like eras to end, especially. Uh, never, he made, never forget. He made, never let's forget. let's put it this way: he made baseball fun for me. Oh yeah, okay, and I'm not. Oh yeah, baseball's kind of way low. I'm on my, the totem pole. I know you're the Red Sox, both the guru kind of. Um, Red Sox are. I will watch, but it's it's hard for me to watch. It's kind of like watching paint dry, so it's a little bit difficult for me. 
to watch games. I love watching them in the playoffs. I watch every playoff game. So, uh, but it's hard to watch a regular season game when they're, you know, pitching really slow and it takes four or five hours for them to play a game. And then there's a runner on, on, uh, on in the 10th inning on second base. So what it comes down to, <laughs> to is, is that we will, <laughs> Robbie has walked off the set as we, as we talk about this. <laughs> again okay so so that's that's my first half of my final thought i have a my, i can't even speak my other thought that may have been the quickest walk off and like that was the very history, quick the history of show walk offs and like all it, it was it was very very there, quick i was, was waiting was for like, at least a good boy, three yeah. minutes and it was a good three minutes but it didn't even i was waiting for three minutes it was like 30 seconds it was three it maybe three seconds three seconds yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so my other, my other final thought for this episode is the fact that I'm going to go with a little Celtics. Uh, the Celtics supposedly had a, a, a non-productive team meeting, uh, within the last few days. Non-productive is by the way, not a good thing to have when you're having a team meeting. Uh, productive meeting is much better. Um, I had a chance to think about this last night a little bit when I heard about it. Um, it's very interesting because you have Jason Tatum and you have Jalen Brown. You have these guys basically running the team for the last year or so, or two years, and them getting those two guys basically getting more points. And it's so interesting because somebody brought up Marcus Smart was the first to say, look, they got to pass the ball. I, I'm standing in the corner and they're not passing to me. I'm totally open and they're just shooting and they're covered. They're double teamed and they're shooting the ball and why aren't they passing to me? Right. So it's interesting because somebody on the NBA network brought up the fact, and I thought it was very interesting and very true, is the fact that if you got 30, 40, 50 points, Mr. Tatum, and you have two assists, okay, or three not assists. Good. It's not good. Okay, so you're actually Marcus Smart actually may may be right. Yeah. You're not passing the ball if you have low assists and you have these ton of points, which is great. Paul Pierce, this is the connection. Paul Pierce in the '90s was absolutely like this. He was winning games for them. He was taking over games and winning games, but he couldn't do it by himself. He can't. It's a team game. You cannot do it by himself. After a while, he's just losing games with that horrible coach that we had from Louisville. So he was just he's losing games. He's not walking through that door, by the he's way. Not, he's, he's not, not walking, walking through the door, door because he's gray and old, and he's not walking through the door. So what it comes down to is Paul Pierce had the same exact thing until he figured out, and even when Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen came in, for that great championship year in 2007, 2008, he still had a hard time passing the ball and letting Ray Allen win a game for him. But he got, he finally, he finally said, wow, I can actually pass the ball and somebody can shoot it. And I know there's a confidence level there. I get it. If you're going to pass to, to um, you know, Langford, you got to make sure that Romeo Langford's going to shoot the ball and it's going to go in. If you don't have confidence in that, you're going to shoot the ball yourself. I get it. I understand that. What I think the team needs to do is, is they need to bring Paul Pierce. Have Paul Pierce talk about when he first came to the Celtics versus when they finally got players on the team that could actually pass that he could pass to, that he had confidence in, that that would that would make the team win. That's what they need to do. Uh, that's what I think they need to do. They need to play as a team. Enough of this crap. They need to play as a team. And a team game means you pass the ball around. The the games you watch the games that they win. The games that they win are when they pass the ball around and they get the best shot. That's the way to do it. Not to go down every single time and shoot a three pointer when you're covered every single time, because you're not going to do that. And that's what I said. That's what I've been seeing. They have to get together as a team. Yeah. And the other thing I thought about was, is 
what Doc Rivers brought this guy in. And Butu. Yeah. I win, you win. That's the way it is. They need to develop in Butu. Or they need to bring that same guy in and have that same thing. Kevin Garnett loved it. He thought it was awesome. He's the one that said, let's, what, ready? We're going to uh, say a Butu on three. One, two, three, a Butu. They said it every game. After that, they won every, not every single game, but they won a lot of games. They won the championship. They had to get together as a team and win games together as a team. This is not an individual sport. Is it? So that's well, a little bit of a rant. No, a little bit of a rant. It's interesting because since that, those comments in that meeting, uh, they did win last night against the Magic, and they're actually beating Miami by 20 points currently late in the fourth quarter. So on their way to actually two straight wins oh. since since that meeting and since those comments were made. So they be was not as non-productive as one might think. We shall see. Yeah. Very <laughs> Let me rub my beard here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's awesome. But yeah, that's my that's my two. Um Again, uh, we are on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on, what's the other thing we're on, Robbie? We're on SoundCloud. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I, I just, I couldn't remember that, uh, you know, that other, that other <laughs> media that we're not on. <laughs> walk it off. Second time, he's walking off. Yes, I got to walk off twice. Wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> He's walking off for longer now, but anyway, we had we had a good time talking. I, I was only I was only two more seconds than the last time. Oh, uh, so anyway, uh, we had we had uh, I I had a good time talking about Rem Dog tonight. I think Robbie did too. Um, yeah, and no, I mean we, obviously. We, <laughs> hey, listen, on an episode like this, if you can't add a little bit of humor to it, you know, what are, what are you doing with yourself? It's all you good know, to add on, the humor. It's on, all good. Yeah. It's all good. It's nothing wrong with that. So um, <laughs> anyway, take a, t- take a check at this episode. It's good. It's great. Uh, past episodes. Uh, check out our 100th, which was our last episode. <laughs> Uh, considering this is 101 episode 101, so it would I'm just loving, I'm just loving you. I'm just loving you trying to like sort of go circle back through here. I'm circling. Get I'm back circling. On. I am circling. I am heading to the end. Uh, that's our episode. We're out. Thank you to our sponsor, uh, Zyman Organizing. Yeah. And uh, we had a great time tonight. Doug, Doug, can, yeah. I, can I just say one thing? Can I just want to say one thing because we completely oh, we are going to finish, but never no, finish because we completely did miss something at the very beginning of our episode, which is a, a I said hello to you. Hall, no, no, a hallmark of the sports splits is oh, that if cave. you are underneath a rock or if you're in a cave, please come out and give us a watch and listen, and then you can go back in if you so choose. So, yes, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell. Hit the bell, man. Hit that bell, bing. That's right. So we we had a great time tonight, Robbie. Thank you so much. I had a fun time with this episode Always, tonight. Doug. And uh, we will talk to you on our next episode of the Sports Blitz. Bye, everybody.